Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order for our board work session. Uh, don't know if you know, people signed on, but uh, we do like public input and to basically send any comments or anything in to John um, and we'll take a look at it. I do want to uh, apologize to you know the citizens and to the board for the election that we ran and the fact that normally I was run it by our in-house council, but we don't have one right now. And the one in Seattle, I should call it, one we cannot vote to replace a commissioner until that commissioner is off the board today. We had to wait until after September. Uh, the paper ballots was nothing meant, you know, to hide anything. It was just thought it would be a simple way to do it. It didn't make the person being voted on and say, well, you know, you voted against me, whatever. So we're going to make sure we go by the book. There was an article in the paper on the board, and one of the things is this big old manual that you can see this that basically dictates how many commissioners we have and what their terms are and sets it up. So as far as there were some comments in the paper, in order to change a lot of those things, they'd have to go back to the state and get the Senate and representatives to totally modify that. So it's not something that we can do. We have to live by the But isn't there some question about how we might be able to expand the board itself? I thought that that was something yeah. that we might be able to It has to be an odd number. Yeah. And, you know, like right now we have five, you're allowed to have three, you could have seven, mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, and researching it more, whether we wanted to even add any more members to the board. It's really hard to get people to run for the seats we have. This is the best now. Yep. But on even like on some of the committees now, we do have the ability to appoint uh, some citizens to be involved in the committee part. Well, I think Dr. Allen in his letter did bring up a good point regarding, and, and I brought it up as a question in the past of whether or not expanding the board from five to seven would mean that um, it would be less, it would be less onerous on the board members themselves on the number of meetings because it just seems to be escalating. Uh, uh, and uh, also that you, you have more diversity in, in the board itself. It might be something that uh, perhaps in the yeah. future. I'll, I'll try. I, it's in here. And I, I remember reading it, how yeah. what we have to do to go about doing that. Well, I mean, I don't expand. know whether that's something that uh, others on the board are interested in and maybe to wait until our new board member right so our next up, so you know our next board meeting will have the full five of us <clears throat> yeah. i'll get the information out of the book here and make sure that we have it for a discussion item yeah. and then just put some thought into that so yeah. anyway i i just wanted to start the meeting out to apologize to the board i know that you guys are taking some meetings on how that was handled it's on me mostly you could well, I'm just saying, I will be sure to all have. I, I suppose, yeah. like I said, I apologize to the board and the community that I should have researched it more. It is what it is. So I apologize. Now it's time to move on. So I'd like to call for the public meeting order. And is there any points of order? Anybody like to know? Uh, I guess it would be uh, that uh, the agenda item B. Uh, board board items B that will not be taking place. The swearing in of a new commissioner. Right? No, I'll, I'll address that though. Okay, okay, we we'll get to that. Uh, I can jump to that right now. Basically, we will. The first thing we're going to do is vote on a new commissioner. Once we vote on a new commissioner, they basically need to make arrangements here with John, and they have to do the swearing in in front of a notary republic. And We've arranged for that. So it's just a matter of finding out what their schedule is. They can come in and do a little swearing in and it gets all no no rice. So oh, that, that needs to take place between now and our actual board meeting. So he's not sworn in at the next board meeting. No, he'll 
he or she will get voted or sworn in anywhere between now and then so that when the board meeting happens, you know, happens they are legitimately a commission. Okay. They will be a commissioner as soon as they come in and vote. Mr. Chairman, yes, I would make a motion that we select Gregory M. Richardson as our next commissioner. I second that. Don't we have to take a vote? That's the well, motion, right? No, but I mean, don't we? Don't I mean, how do, uh, is it, it just on? No, I'm, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. That we have a vote to select. Yeah. Gregory M. Richardson. Well, but the motion should be let's vote on a commissioner. Yes. So this time we're seconded. it. All in favor of the vote. So we have uh, two candidates. One backpack. One backpack. Yeah. Yeah. So who are the two candidates? We have uh, Richard. Or, or we have Gregory M. Richardson and we have uh, Ms. Morgan Cooper. Okay. So, we want to make the we'll call for the vote. So, does that want to vote for Gregory Richardson? I, I vote for Gregory Richardson. And I. I would vote for Gregory. Basically, if you all raise your hand <laughs> so that it's very dark. Okay. So there's, there's no sense to move forward. So basically, we will send it, the note out to him that he's been voted by the commission board here. So do we now do a vote in favor of and then say yes or no? I mean, we don't want to be in. Non compliance again, yeah. that's how we it's kind of a gray area, but why don't we go ahead and do that? So, we have to make a motion that appoint him as a commission. Okay, I will make a motion that we appoint Gregory M. Richardson as our uh, fifth commission. I second that. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. All right. So moved unanimous. Thank you. So basically, um, John will get word out to him that it's up to him to come in and get sworn in. He doesn't need to do it at an open meeting, it just needs to be done. And I will be on our board. Thank you. And you know, hopefully, Morgan's on the there too. But we really appreciate your involvement. And sorry for the ordeal here, but. Okay, so moving on, uh, with Nancy resigning from the board, she was also a uh, secretary of the board. So we need to replace her as a secretary. Finish up her, they say it will be the rest of this year and next year. Can you describe what the uh, role of the secretary. The, the normal role of the secretary is there's a lot of documentation that comes through here that we all will vote on it. And we have to sign each commissioner has to sign, including the secretary. But the back page is kind of certifying, it. and that's where the secretary will sign. So there's some signature that's required by the secretary on documentation, uh, and basically. As the president of the board, if I can't make a board meeting or workshop meeting, then the secretary will step in and run the board meeting. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I, I think I'd be more than happy to do that. That's pretty great. Pardon me? I would be more than happy to do that. To do what? Your secretary. Move to appoint Eric Anderson as secretary of the board. <laughs> um, I would also volunteer to do that. I would support you with that. Actually. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm working full time, so I'm just 
that's what I'm doing right now. So we are going to be able to do it. Would you like to do that? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm delighted that somebody. Okay, so basically, uh, I need one of you to make a nomination and one second. I guess I need to withdraw the nomination of Eric. Okay. I'll, I'll start with that. Okay, so you withdraw I, I would make a motion in. Mr. Gill, go over there to do the, uh, do the secondary. Thank you. Uh, second. Any, any discussion before the train runs over? <laughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. Um, uh, okay, so hopefully we cut through that one. Uh, you, Mike, do you know, is there any resolution <coughs> coming from the board? There are none today. And uh, if there's no contracts to be approved either. No contracts to be approved today. Okay, and so basically, right now, we haven't written down the discussion of the formation of the compliance committee, but we already have a compliance committee and the board committee. And basically, what we wanted to do is have Shannon come up and just give us an overview so that everybody understands what we're doing, what, how important and what the compliance committee does. Hello. So compliance program is actually a policy for us that compliance for Whitby Health is committed to providing quality, cost-effective cost health care, and a positive work environment. So can we, Jenna, yes. Can you come up here and sit at the table yes. both for us and for on the side? You can just take a camera and wait just a moment. Is that okay? Okay. I'm going to take, can you take the mask off? I cannot. Okay. Okay. So compliance would be health is committed to providing quality and cost-effective health care and a positive work environment. Would be health is dedicated to adhere to the highest ethical standards, and we recognize the importance of full compliance with state and federal laws. So we have a compliance program here at Whitby Health, and that requires all personnel to comply with laws and our compliance manual, our organization's business and activities, and our legal risks as an organization. We also have compliance education that is for the board and employees annually. We have audits, monitoring, and reporting programs in place that funnel to the compliance committee that meets quarterly. And we also have enforcement and disciplinary measures to ensure compliance with a partnership with HR. Any questions? No, but a, a comment. I know you were, but, you know, we were talking about that earlier that other places have gotten in trouble on the compliance and how quick they respond to things. Um, I really appreciate the details that you're giving us and explaining it. But I think that a lot of people just don't realize how important it is in order to keep the doors open and keep going forward. And no matter what else is going on, if we're out of compliance, you know, that's one of the first things that's going to hit us. So I really appreciate your efforts and how detailed things are. And you did have a question. Yeah, my question is uh, you know, more and more of these federal mandates and state mandates are coming down and uh, you know, and, and just the compliance committee itself and the complexity of it. How many FTEs, how many individuals do you have on board to keep track of all of this? So I partner with the compliance collaborative group. I also partner with Health Tech for compliance. Uh, however, it is just me for compliance with the mm -hmm. partnership with HR and Mike, of course. So you get you have some support, but you are the primary person that has to do all of the juggling of this. Correct. So we can blame you. <laughs> well, that's why we have a compliance quarterly committee, so mm -hmm. we're all aware and the minutes, yeah. Or you can thank her too. <laughs> yeah. well, we, we paid for her hair dye because it's gone really great. <laughs> are, are you getting the support that you need to be able to do your job? Yes, and I think with the partnership with Health Tech, Cherie has been phenomenal um, with the guidance for compliance and really uh, has given us guidance for the program that we needed. 
So, how many people are in your department that assist you? Myself. For compliance. For compliance. Okay. Both. Staff. Correct. But on compliance events specifically, to me directly. Okay. Thank you. Have we done the have, have we had the DMV uh, survey? We have not. Our windows open till the end of December. Oh my gosh. Anytime. That's what you said last month. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. Anytime. Are you ready for it? Okay. Yeah. And we'll let y'all know when they do the mm -hmm. No, I want to know afterwards. <laughs> oh, <laughs> me too. <laughs> So the other item on here is our committee assignments. Uh, basically, I just want the board to look at the chart we have of the assignments. Do you have a copy of that? No. Well, there's one over there. Yeah. Basically, I want you to, to look at where you're at on what committees and at our board meeting, we'll go over it. Um, I'm going to reach out now to our new commissioner, and I would like to you know, put him uh, on some different committees. I didn't know if there was any, I know that I have you on a lot of committees. I had lied to you and told you there was one meeting, and I have you on several committees. Well, I think, you know, it may be something to differentiate, um, like the all provider meeting is not a commissioner's meeting, but it's something that I think is useful for one of us, at least, mm -hmm. to um, participate in. Uh, and the building committee, until we get enough money, is not active. And uh, are there, you know, the one thing that has been discussed, wasn't it sort of a, uh, uh, a general governance committee or something like that uh, that we were supposed to have? Or yeah, we still have to check in that one. Okay. But it's like the uh, compliance committee. You know, whether you want to stay on that or you might cut back on a committee. I have no um, problems getting a committee. Okay. What I, I would like to do is appoint the new commissioner to you take your place on compliance, if that's okay with you. Uh, when did that start? <laughs> I think um, years from today. <laughs> anyway, um, I would like to, uh, I'll, I'll go on to credentialing and I'll bring on the new commissioner there. I've had experience with being on the credentialing. And there's going to be a change there with the from MEC. So yeah, I put the new commissioner on, uh, on credentialing. And then uh, I'm going to Dr. Anderson said that he would be on finance. James, uh, actually, I need to appoint James right now because the finance committee meet before our board meeting. And so, James, will you be willing to be the chair of the finance committee? Yes. Okay, so uh, Dr. Anderson and James will be on that one. Uh, and then on the medical staff, let's then put a new commissioner, new commissioner on that. So, I just want for our next board meeting. Mm -hmm. People think about it and come back with any comments, and then we'll do an official appointment to all the meetings. Yeah, and I think I don't know how many meetings uh, Mr. Goldberg had an opportunity to different committee meetings that you had an opportunity to sort of see in action before sort of getting assigned. But uh, I still would think that that would be a good idea for. A new commissioner or anyone else who hasn't had the opportunity to see all, all of these meetings to that's what we want to start tracking better. Yeah, uh, it's like I said, right now, um, the finance 
issues that we really, really doing a turnaround here on the finances. We've got to stay on top of that. And so I know that Jim, Dr. Anderson and James, it's just a lot of info that they're going to be overwhelmed. And mm -hmm. so I'd like you guys to concentrate on that and start shuffling the new commissioner around. We can all work closer together on some people where that person can fit in. Anyway, I just want everybody, everybody has a list. Our board meetings will go over that better. Okay. Health tech update. Neil. Thank you, sir. Boy, uh, first I wanted to thank uh, Paul Rogers for being here. I think I met with Paul this morning, and uh, I think we're making some progress, uh, particularly in some certain areas. Uh, Health Tech has a, a product, a platform that we call Optimum that has four components, and primarily the one we're focusing on right now is the financial uh, <clears throat> statement platform, which has not only the operating uh, profit and loss statement, balance sheet, and statistics, ratios, a few other things that we're trying to get up and running for the board. Uh, just because of the situation that we were faced with, it's taking us longer than we would like to get that up and running. But we're hopeful that uh, probably your work session in November, uh, Paul and our VP of Finance, John Freeman, who has been serving on the Committee for Finance, will actually be here and hopefully we can go through that document and have an experience to at least learn a little bit about how it, a lot of our boards really like it because it's it's pretty cut and dry as far as the information that's on there well, you know it answers a lot of questions so we're kind of glad that that's coming um, Paul has some pretty good feelings about the financial statement not so much about the balance sheet because we've still got some work to do there. Uh, I'm, I'm, Glad that that's finally starting to come together. Uh, Joy Smith from our staff uh, uh, in financial services revenue, she'll be here next week again. You actually had a pretty good billing uh, or a collections uh, last month. It was close to 10 million, which is actually, I think it's pretty good. So, and then Faith Jones has been working with your team uh, trying to get the care coordination product up and running. Uh, we're doing some of that right now, but we're not necessarily building. So there's some real opportunities that are to, to, to capture the revenue that we're, we're due. We just haven't been building. So, and that should be, we're hoping to get that implemented by the end of this calendar year. Uh, Carol St. Charles has been working with Curtis on some swing bed stuff, and that will continue. And then, uh, as, as Sean indicated, Sherry will continue to have contact with Sean on the compliance uh, program. And I know she gave a, a little bit of an educational thing the last time she was here, but um, we can't emphasize enough how important the compliance aspect is, uh, plus the expediency of knowing uh, issues that, that can be addressed. And I, I think uh, as Sean wasn't involved, but some of us have been complimenting her on the, how well she's been doing in her positions. Thank you for that. And unless you have any other questions, I have some stuff in the executive session. But as far as the report, that would be what I have to offer today. Anybody have any questions again? No, I always got to thank Mike Lafayette for being here. <laughs> so, before we get into the administrative part, um, it's okay with the board. I'd like to, we have the uh, we have nursing represented, we have facilities represented, we have HR represented. I would like to see if they have you know, any questions. We've all, I'll, I'll just make a comment. You know, since this is kind of a work session, uh, and we have a board meeting coming up in um, whatever, eight days, eight work days or so. Um, this is going to kind of limit to just a couple of. Uh, yeah, that, that's all I want to do. I don't want to, and I don't think they can't be fair. I, I don't want to report from them. I'm asking them if there's anything that you want us to be knowing or thinking about before you work. I don't think so. I think we're active getting flu shots out. Probably the biggest thing for the compliance is that we now have wired bedside medication scanners at the bedside. And so we're seeing a good adherence to our policy. 
just because the safety is the administration and what medications. So that's a positive. Other than that, we'll keep on keeping them. Well, they need to report today, but um, let's fire in the fire and make some report for our next one. Questions? I don't know if we want to hear from Kim because he always wants money for something. <laughs> no, I, I have a small report after Mike and then um, I'll do my main update at the board meeting. Okay. So you would be okay if he, he did get prepared to cover one topic. Yeah. Not good enough. So we just want to update the board on the Siemens contract. So just a little history in 2017. Our organization signed a 10 year contract with Siemens for about $17 million. Um, it amounts to about 140, a little over $140,000 on a monthly basis. That contract basically, what it was providing was uh, new modalities in the imaging department, along with service and support for that equipment. Um, to date, we, we they have fulfilled a lot of that contract. Um, some of the major stuff was not able to be brought into our organization due to you know, rooms being too small, um, electrical, you know, some of the um, infrastructure was not in place to bring in, like, for example, an MRI, an ACT. Um, fortunately, um, after five years of being in this contract, the um, equipment has changed and we are in the process of, you know, we have a mobile MRI, um, not exactly what we wanted. It would be nice to have it inside the building, but we have an MRI that is reliable and doing, you know, providing great patient care, allowing procedures to be done. We are working on getting the floral, the, the new CT and the X-ray our floral has been down for a couple of years. But because of some changes in the technology, we can put that equipment into the existing spaces. We do, we just had a meeting earlier, we do have to do some upgrades um, not just put in the new equipment and provide a little bit of electrical work, but because of uh, the work being done in the CT room, we will have to also address some of the air conditioning um, for that room, the air, air, air temperature control. But in February, um, due to our financial situation, we stopped paying Siemens and um, asked if we could relook at this um, contract and try to reduce our costs. Jim Schroeder started that process. Um, Siemens was very slow in response. Jim left. They kind of took it over. They had sent us an addendum. Um, they had reduced the cost down to about $109,000 a month. And they wanted, the, they were willing to wait three of the six months that we had, had not paid for today, um, but they wanted the other three months. So it could, Basically, they wanted about six hundred thousand dollars today. Um, I reached out to them and said, "We can't do that. We need to um, come up with some better prices and see what we can do to can continue with our partnership." I gave them some options, but we were able to finally reach an agreement. We had a few meetings. Mike and Paul sat in on a couple of those um, as imaging leader. Um, we've been involved in, in some of these. But we have an addendum that we have signed now. Um, this addendum has reduced our monthly cost down to a hundred thousand a month. Um, we are they have waived three of those six months. The other three months, instead of paying for them today and catching it all up, they're actually going to put that off until March of next year. Um, the goal was to try and get floral and some of these things up and running start seeing some of those um, the revenue increases before we start paying for those that may or may not line out with the equipment delays and some other things as we work through the construction of that. But overall, um, you know, we're saving, um, we have 66 payments left for the duration of the contract. Um, this year, we will you know, see roughly about a $1 million savings by having some things deferred, the monthly payments decrease. So, that is where we're at. So a lot of hard work and a lot of effort to try to reduce this cost for us. And it's greatly appreciated. Really a lot of hard work on his part. And big, big thank you to him. Uh, job. Well, like I said, again, just like the chat, I really appreciate your efforts. It's not an unrecognized. And, 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 
anche la struttura il vertino che non sono i pezzi no, non mi serve il link per esempio il vertino che non è il giallo Okay, are there any questions? No, I do have something I'd like to add, and I don't know if this is a good time because it has to do with contracts, it has to do with negotiations and things that I was just informed about yesterday, and uh, leadership may not. Would that be better to bring up an executive session and make the next person? No, it, no. It, 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 okay. no, I don't think so. Isn't that fine? Um, I, I was at the pharmacy, the community pharmacy, um, to get my uh, shots and also to transfer my care. And as I was leaving, Teresa uh, caught me and said that she wasn't sure that. You know where to go. Uh, that apparently Tricare is going to stop using uh, our facility as part of the network because they are moving to all uh, mail-in pharmacy, and that they to, are to one provider, actually. yeah at Walgreen evidently, and that this is going to be quite a uh, an impact on this pharmacy and she was sort of not knowing exactly how to and where to go because in the past she had worked with the former finance person. This was several iterations ago and that um, uh, was just wanting to see about getting some help. I can send her email to me and forward it to anyone to sort of take on from here if there is something that can be done, but we've got so much nonsense with TRICARE as it is that uh, I don't know whether or not anything can be done about it. So I would like to get it off of my list and hand it over to where it belongs somewhere. We are totally aware of TRICARE and what the building thing. You know, she reports over to Boston because she's out of town. I'll contact her and uh, let her know. Shall I send this email to yes, you then? Yes, and this is it's kind of fast breaking news. It did us about Friday. Yeah. That I got out in this spot. All hospitals in the state of Washington, it's not just no. our pharmacy or our hospital. All, all hospital based pharmacies, all pharmacies, whoever they are, um, they have a, a, a buyer program. They bid out and they think that this one uh, group that they're going through can control their cost better. Uh, one, it's about the position of cost, they're giving them more volume. Apparently, they bid it out. Um, and so it will, uh, it will impact us. Um, the, the Washington State Hospital Association, I'm about to say Tennessee, Washington State Hospital Association is aware of it, it's been hospital secretary. So our, our thoughts on it, uh, we had a group meeting Monday morning on it about hospitals is to uh, begin to do some, uh, some politics to say, this is hurting all of our pharmacies in the state by doing this. So yes, send it to me. Yeah, I will certainly do that. Now. Thank you. Because it, obviously it affects our, our clients also that they have yeah. to change, yeah, to change the service providers. I want to go to mail order so that they don't even really have to go into the pharmacy. They don't just contact us one of the contractors. Yeah, I mean, uh, mail order is fine, but you'd like to have some option mm -hmm. in where that mail order service is available. And we can do mail order. So uh, it's, uh, and all, most all pharmacies can do mail order. Anyway, that's a, that was a, a bidding process that we were not asked to bid on the smaller pharmacies at the big, big boards. Yeah, well, you know, it, it seems like maybe she just wasn't aware of all of this thing on this this other level that was yeah. going on. And we, we didn't find out about it until uh, later. Yeah. World time is over there. We're already asked to look at it. Paul. Thank you, Ron. 
So uh, with respect to next year's budget, uh, much work has been done and much remains to be done. I'm looking at a budget calendar here and there's some dates that are fast approaching that I'll just remind you of. Uh, the week of uh, October 19, uh, there'll be presentations that I make to, to health tech leadership and to hospital leadership uh, with respect to uh, a draft budget for FY23. And then there will be meetings the following week as well and a public hearing on summary budget uh, November 15th. There'll be a finance committee meeting on December 14th and the presentation to the board for approval on December 15th. So, uh, lots of dates forthcoming. Uh, it's uh, taking shape. I'm massaging uh, the numbers as I learn about things that are going to be different in FY23 as opposed to FY22. So I think we're on track, we're making good progress. And uh, I'm here to answer any questions if you have any about that process. So now you know that. The responsibility for that whole budget is on you and the chairman of the finance committee. Yes. And so it's a shared responsibility. I just want that documented that the two of you. Are in <laughs> so we will be working mostly together. <laughs> Last year, when there was um, sort of massaging of the of the budget and everything, and some of the estimates of. Um, what things were going to look like for the year. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I don't recall hearing or understanding uh, was um, what was projected mm -hmm. and what actually happened. Right. Of how close those two were. And even today, in terms of how did we meet the estimates that were created by Jim? You know, nine months ago, uh, or where are we on track? Well, here's what I can share with you about that. I have not seen, nor do I believe that a actual budget was developed for this year. That we're in right now, so there is no comparison of actual to budget that can be made. Unless this budget lives somewhere that I have. Well, I think maybe I'm talking, maybe it's not the budget itself, but mm -hmm. the projections of what the finances were going to look like based on uh, changes in FTEs and, and those sorts of things right. so that we were going to get out of the red mm -hmm. and that by the end of the year, things were really looking up. Uh, and and I suppose that that is different from a budget per se in terms of yeah. how the money is spent. But I it think, still is, it still is one of those things that we we ought to have some idea of. Uh, sir, certainly, and I think I know where you're going with that. Uh, the optimum reports that uh, Mr. Tahunter was talking about previously. That is a portfolio of reports um, that uh, Health Tech uh, utilizes and is offered to the board to show exactly what you're asking for. How, how are we doing this year? So um, I think that information will provide you with what you're asking for in terms of how we're doing. Well, you know, we hear what we're doing by the cash case on hand, mm -hmm. but the missing part in, in my mind is, is this where we had been projected to be based on the finance people that were here before you, uh, out of curiosity more than anything else, or 
because I, I remember that one of the criteria for us to get where we needed to be was an average of, for example, four swing beds uh, a day. Mm -hmm. Well, clearly we don't even have the staff to be able to do that at this point. So uh, realistically, that hasn't happened. So we might project it, but it hasn't happened yet. And so uh, that, that still is a little unknown mm -hmm. um, 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 you know, how much we can see into the future. We'll take a look at this in the uh, finance committee next uh, week and see what we can uncover for you. I mean, it's. I was just going to offer. I think the, the problem we've been having is, quite frankly, the financials were in such a state that we really were still kind of grasping to make sure that we're presenting you accurate information. Lots of attempts. There's, I mean, there's reconciliations that haven't been accomplished. The balance sheet is still trying to, we're trying to get that together. I think there's two, fortunately, the unknowns, I think, are diminishing. Is that a fair statement? Absolutely. And I think probably by next, next month, November, December, probably for sure, we'll be at a point where we will be able to answer some of your questions. Uh, we had, I haven't seen any projections from previous administration, but, you know, I think right now the best barometer we have is cash. <laughs> and hopefully, you know, we get beyond that very soon because it's difficult for us to help you manage if we don't have accurate financial information. I mean, that's the bottom line. And hopefully that's coming very soon. We've been, Mike and, and I have been trying to get that accomplished for a fair amount of months here. Mm -hmm. And I think we're getting very close. Thanks. We made, uh, we made a lot of progress last week with respect to um, what portion of that accounts receivable on our books are we not going to be paid? And I'm talking about millions of dollars here. Uh, I think our accounts, our outstanding accounts receivable is $37 million. And that's at gross. So a big part of my job is valuing that $37 million. What is that really worth in terms of cash coming to us after they've taken out money for the contractual allowances that have been negotiated in those contracts? So um, we made some significant progress with uh, net accounts receivable and net revenue last week um, and believing, and we can now believe the numbers that we're looking at are real uh, in those two areas. So I don't know if that made any sense. Well, the 37 million that we've lost, no, no, no. Never, no, no. When we perform a service for patients, we bill for that service. And on our books, those services are valued at $37 million that we've not been paid for. And, and why is that? Uh, because there's a, uh, there's a billing and collection process that has to happen. So is that still outstanding so that we have, with the way that you're trying to work things now, that there is a way of getting those $37 yeah. million? Dollars? First, we have, first, we have to figure out what is that $37 million really worth in terms of cash that we expect to receive. And then when we know that, um, th then we can be sure about the net revenues that we're reporting on our income statement. And could we run our households this way? No. No, it's it, this mm -hmm. is too complicated. Mm -hmm. 
And the contractual, yeah. you might explain the contractual. Yeah, I, it's just I mean, we don't have to belabor it, but it's it's this is simple. We typically go in advance committee, but we can go into the explain contractuals and when, that sure, sure. When we bill a dollar out to an insurance company, we have agreements with Medicare, with Medicaid, with Blue Cross, with all these insurance companies to pay us. Uh, an amount of money for that dollar that we bill. And what they pay us is less than what we bill them. And that's because these contracts direct volume to this hospital, which is, which is something that's needed. We get volume discounts for these contracts uh, that we belong to. I just received two bills, one for my spouse and one for myself. The billing was uh, paid 50% in one and 30% in another. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm imagining that that's what you're talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, also, if that bill becomes a little bit delinquent, we will turn it over to a contractor to try and collect. And he's going to take a percentage out yeah. of that bill. So maybe you had a bill for $100 and we're going to receive $30 on that. So we carry on our accounts receivable $30. And actually, we carry $100, but we're only going to be able to collect $30. Then we have to pay the, the agency that's contracting to collect that. Maybe we pay them $0.10 cents or $0.15. Cents. So ultimately, we're going to collect maybe $0.20 cents on that original billing of a dollar. And that doesn't include the cost, you know, the labor costs of putting it all together, the postage, you know, everything else. So might as well do charity care. Well, we do a lot of that. Do that too. But the medical industry is like one of the few. I mean, you know, Ace Hardware wouldn't be able to operate that way. Okay. Oh, sure. Like they sell sell a bolt for a dollar, they want mm -hmm. And so it, it always frustrates you, like you said, you may have $37 million showing that you filled out. Out of that, will we get 20 million? You know, and, and exactly. then you write off the 17 million. Yeah, it's, like, it's crazy that you do it that way. But that's the way all hospitals have to function in insurance companies. Thank you. The, the deepest discounts are with Medicare and Medicaid because that's where most of the volumes come from. Well, it seems like TRICARE does a pretty good job with that, too. TRICARE, yeah. Mm -hmm. But isn't TRICARE? Like a third less or something like that than the Medicare? Yeah, actually, I think TRICARE is even less money than Medicare and Medicare. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, thank you for the tutorial. My pleasure. You guys are doing a good job. Got a, good team, got a good team work in that AR. You know? Yeah, getting the whole hospital on solid footing. And uh, you know, when you read the papers, all the hospitals across the nation are in so much trouble. I feel really lucky to have you guys on board and what work you're doing. So, today's cash on hand. Yeah, today, uh, 18.6 in. Uh, in operating cash, uh, 22 in reserve, uh, just in case. If, I think that's uh, X number of days cash on hand. It's 300,000 a day. 300,000 300, a day, and there's 22 days of that. And then we've got uh, seven days of cash, which is about $2, $2 million for debt service. So the 18.6 is the, the working one. Yeah. yeah. Good question. Any other questions for Paul? <laughs> so I think Mike told you the thing you save the best for last, but I'm not really sure. So, <laughs> so just after that board of introduction, uh, just a, one of the uh, minor the woods, just want to touch on the valuable health problem. Uh, we continue to move forward planning 
uh, doing everything we can to uh, get it set up to get going. We uh, got a chance to meet with uh, two of the uh, county commissioners to talk about how to help. Ben Sinclair and Ms. Bacon um, went over really, really well. And uh, they are in total support of Mahigal Health. It's one of, from their eyes, major need on the island. Got the sheriff on it. Um, he's very much uh, supportive of the program. Um, and a little spin off of that, and uh, Ben Goldberg was talking to one of them and uh, said, you know, we'd love to. Not have the best relationship, it seems like, or understanding, you know, maybe at the hospital, but you know, so we're going to bring them out and give them some tours at the hospital. They buy a tour to the one of them and uh, the other two. So uh, that's that's moving along. We're looking at, at uh, beginning the program in uh, Freeland and Goldie, where behavioral health will begin. And when I say begin, we're going to start out very slow with it and just move into it if we can find appropriate staffing for it. Um, one of our major goals, of course, is to reopen the Freeland Clinic. And we have until next April to reopen the clinic before we lose the RHC status. And the reason that I say we will open and go in Freeland uh, is that the RHC reimbursement is right at $390. Uh, and the Freeland is at $230. So there'll be more movement going on in Goldie. And this is the preliminary, and it changes a little bit too. If we do the cost report and we look at PS, PSR data, we may get more reimbursement you know, based on the cost report at Freeland and Goldie. It, it moves on us every year uh, based on our cost. Um, so I was talking about this. So we, we just have to look and see where. Um, it'll fit best. And uh, so I have a financial performance in front of me. It's a, it's a graph, very detailed, uh, showing uh, that we, you know, where we begin and end over a year. And the assumptions are not all in yet. So you can look at this graph if you want to, but I'd rather not because it's not all together yet. We're, we're building it. And one of the places uh, we're going to visit off island next Tuesday, a higher health program. Uh, Catholic's going over in Alley, I think, and Clark Miller. Clark's on vacation today um, to an off island site where they're running behavioral health program and a MAC program. So you first talk about that. So we will take their experiences, plug it into this uh, program, and also plug in our chronic care management dash behavioral health that we do every day and um, the laboratory revenue that will be generated from behavioral health. So just giving you just a quick update that we're still moving forward with the program, uh, taking slow baby steps into it, no rush. Um, and we're talking with our department managers in the clinics to be sure we have enough staffing. Um, some of the physicians we move out of the Freeman Clinic might like to come back to the Freeman Clinic, and they're in other clinics now. So if they do, uh, they can come back, but we're not replacing. So there's a lot of moving parts, moving forward with it. We're excited about the program. That's basically what I'm going to have to All I have. Any questions? Commissioner um, Sinclair happened to stop by my house this weekend. And uh, we were talking, and it's like, you know, I told her, thank you. I mean, really appreciate her efforts that she's made for us and possible. But she also made a comment that she'd really like to see where we're at, you know, not only surviving but going forward. So, just an opportunity to you know thank her for yeah. meeting with us, yeah. and you know, she's really encouraged by the fact that we're reaching out and having a better relationship and meeting with the commissioners. So it'd be nice to meet all three of them, but like I said, it's worked out really good to be able to talk to her and thank her for. Her efforts that she's made, and in fact, that it was you know, she addressed them where we're at. I'm going to meet with them one on one right now, and uh, then we will meet with all of them in November. So, I have an opportunity to tell them where we are now as we meet with them one on one because, as you know, it's three of them come together one time as a board meeting, uh, and we'll be happy to go to a board meeting too. And, uh, that's a good idea to meet right there. Yeah, well, it, it is an opportunity also that. 
if I get information that I can provide that when I go to the Board of Health meeting uh, mm -hmm. once a month, because I do that every month mm -hmm. as a representative of the hospital. Mm -hmm. So that uh, we haven't been able to do that the past couple of months because of stuff. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, uh, that's also a way of informing them about or updating them on the as well. Yeah, I mean, it's important, I think, that, you know, along with what's going on, that we get the story out there to the community that, you know, yes, we were in, you know, in rough shape there, but, it, you know, we really have this place that's got to turn around really quick and go in the right direction and you're going to be here for the long haul. And it's a good place to be. Is that it, Mike? We have to make one. Okay, well, at this time, uh, you know, our, our next meeting is going to be next Thursday, we're trying to get 12 o'clock. That's our regular board meeting. And if there's anything that's in one or two weeks, two weeks, sorry, that on the 20th, I got that part. Yeah. And so anybody that wants anything added on to the agenda, uh, I'll be working with John. I know that it's, it's going to be a little delay when we get the complete packet out, correct? But we'll get the agenda out. As soon as we can, and so if anybody sees anything on there, so when you the first thing you're going to get is an agenda, because you won't have a complete packet, but it's an opportunity to see if you want certain things added to it. Correct, okay. Uh, along that line, uh, uh, at our last compliance meeting, uh, Shanna and I discussed that. You plan on on a quarterly basis having a report from the compliance committee, so that it was already on the agenda, and we don't miss it. And there's going to be some way of making that happen, but um, we'll get it. Well, at this time uh, we have Neil out here, so we need to go into executive session. Um, Neil, how much time do you think we'll we have to announce how much time do we need? Uh, I'd say no more than 30 minutes. Okay, so basically, why don't we plan on we'll be back in here at 2 30? Could be shorter. Okay, yeah, we have to set the time. So, in the time, then we're going to everybody understand. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, we're back in session. Welcome back. Um, there's no votes taking. We're just having discussions. Uh, we do need to let people know that uh, an offer was sent out for a potential new CEO, but it was not responded to. And so at this stage, uh, we're back looking and doing our due diligence to make sure that we make the right move and get the right CEO in here. Um, and so and we will be working with health tech going forward. And other than that, there's no other decisions made. Anybody else have anything to add to that? Move to adjourn. Second. Is there any discussion on that? <laughs> I'm all in favor. All right. That's fine. The meeting will be.